What's up guys, Jack here with MTS, and I have a bit of a confession to make. In my video here where I talked about running PFSense on this little Ace PC, I talked about wanting to use it as my main home router. Now, I have the AT&T router. You know, the little box that they give you that's absolutely terrible in just about every way, shape, and form. I disabled the Wi-Fi on it, I'm using the Ubiquiti stuff for Wi-Fi, but I haven't been able to get this guy running as my primary router it's been running double natted, which is absolutely terrible. If you don't know what double natting is, in layman's terms, it's basically you plug one router into another router. Um, and you don't wanna do that. You want to have only one router because you don't wanna have to do double port forwarding, adding latency, blah, 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 blah. It just makes things terrible. So in this video, we're gonna be enabling IP pass through so we can use our router here instead of the AT&T router. Let's get into it. If you guys could see this raw camera shot straight out of camera, this is the definition of I'll fix it in post. Before we even get started with anything, first off, you're gonna wanna make sure you have the MAC address of your new router. We're gonna be forwarding all traffic from the AT&T router. Anything that comes in from the WAN is gonna get forwarded to the MAC address of our new router. So we need to make sure that we have that written down. So I already have mine copied to clipboard, so shouldn't be an issue. So getting started, we're gonna come in here and go to our AT&T router's IP address. Normally I would use a private browser window for this for these demonstration purposes. However, I need the uh, passwords that Google Chrome is saving. So we're gonna go to our main router here, and that is at 192.168.1.254. That is AT&T's default IP address for pretty much all of their equipment. So now that we're at the landing page, we're gonna go over here to Firewall, Firewall Advanced, and then we're asked for our access code. Now the access code can be found on the side of your router here. I have mine saved here in Google. So we're gonna click on there and go ahead through. I don't know why I worded it like that. That was kind of weird. Uh, but so we're gonna turn all of these things off. These are basically just some advanced firewall rules, but we don't want the AT&T router handling anything to do with our firewall. So we're gonna come down here and just turn off SIP, turn everything off. Now, if you don't plan on running another router for a little bit, don't do this yet. So we got a warning at the top saying that we're turning off stuff that they really don't want us turning off, but hey, we're turning it off anyway. All right, so now that we have all of these firewall advanced things turned off, we're gonna go and head up to IP pass through. Now this page is where we're gonna take the MAC address from our new router, plug it into the AT&T router, to let this whole experiment thing work. Now this isn't perfect, you might run into a few issues. However, it's pretty easy to reset the AT&T router. All the passwords are just written on the side of it, so don't be too worried about messing things up here. So we wanna change our IP pass-through allocation mode here from off to pass-through, DHCP fixed. However, my router is not currently plugged in, so it's not gonna show up on the list. Also, I don't recommend using a device from this list. Using a device from this list, you will run into some issues. So just manually enter your MAC address of the WAN connection of your new router. Okay, so I've entered my MAC address for the PFSense box. And now we're just gonna go ahead and click on save. Should say changes saved right up here at the top. And we should be good to go ahead and connect our PFSense box. Now that we have the settings configured in the AT&T router and I have my PFSense box plugged in, we need to make sure everything worked and make sure we can't see the AT&T router. You'll still be able to see the AT&T router if you plug directly into it, but going through PFSense and any other router that you have hooked up, you should not be able to access the AT&T router. So I'm going to come over here and just type in the IP address of the AT&T router. So that's 192.168.1.254 and we get nothing. Therefore, we did our job correctly. So with everything done on the software side of things, I'm gonna walk you through really quickly how I have everything connected. So we have the AT&T router and that's going LAN out into the WAN in of our PFSense box. And then the LAN out of the PFSense box is going into a switch, which goes into all of my devices. So now let's take a look at PFSense and see what things look like in there. All right, so coming into PFSense here, we can see our WAN interface and we have my WAN IP address. It's blurred out here because I don't want you guys taking my WAN IP and doing anything nefarious with that. But we can see that the AT&T router is forwarding that to my PFSense box. 
We can also come in here to firewall and rules. And here are pretty much all of my port forwardings that I have going on. We have Unify stuff, we have Plex, I have Plex on Cotton Candy, which is my desktop, and on Olympia, which is my server. So this is basically mirrored just directly over from the AT&T router. But I'm going to show you guys really quickly how to port forward something like a Minecraft server in PFSense. So if we want to forward a Minecraft server, we're going to first come over here to Firewall, NAT, and then we're going to hit Add Above here. And this is where we set up all of our rule information. So interface WAN, address family, IPv4, protocol, we're going to set TCP, UDP, and then destination should be a WAN address. But for our destination port range, we need to enter the port that people are going to connect to to then get into our network. So that's going to be 25565 for a Minecraft server. If you're doing a single port, you don't need to enter another one over here. I'm going to enter one anyway, so 25565. And then redirect target IP. This is where it's going to forward that traffic to. So we're going to put in the address of our server, which is 192.168.1.2. And then our redirect target port needs to be the same as the port we're taking in here. It can be different if you want people to connect to 25567, and then that would then redirect them to 25565 inside of your network. To make things simple, just don't bother doing that. <laughs> I'm going to enter 25565 here. And then we need to enter a description. Our description is basically the name of the rule. So I'm going to call this Minecraft Server on Olympia. That's some weird capitalization, but we're going to roll with it. And then we have NAT reflection and filter rule association. So typically in port forwarding, you would need to then set up your firewall rules and all of the other stuff that goes along with it. These being set to use system default and add associated filter rule means that it's basically going to take this information that we give it and then create all the following rules for it automatically. So just leave this stuff at default and click on save. And now we're going to hit apply. And because this is a, a server, it's an application server, I'm just going to bring this down under my, my application servers divider here just to make things easy on myself and hit save. And with that, we should be good to go. Now, take these rules and apply them to whatever you need. So if you're doing something like a Plex server, that's on 32400 instead of 25565. So you can follow the same steps and just replace 25565 with 32400. Now, I wish I could say just follow these steps and it'll work like a charm. Just reboot the AT&T router, reboot your PFSense router or Ubiquity or whatever you're replacing the AT&T router with. Although it is something to note, you cannot just get rid of your AT&T router. You need to have that AT&T router still acting as your gateway. That's passing through all the traffic and everything. It's annoying, it's stupid, but uh, it's necessary. It's not always this easy though. Now I've done this before where it's worked just as easily as I've shown you here. You just put in your MAC address in the pass-through mode and then unplug and replug in both of your routers so that way they reboot and it works. However, I've also seen it happen a number of times where it's not that simple, where you need to reboot all of the devices a number of times before it picks up that IP address and actually works. Now, sadly for me, that ended up being the case. It was about a three hour process of rebooting everything, making sure that it had the right IP address, all that stuff, which everything was working. All of the settings were correct. The AT&T router just wasn't forwarding all that traffic through to the PFSense box, which Again, after rebooting things about 20 different times, it started working. So it seems to have to do with luck as much as anything else. So if it doesn't work immediately, unplug stuff, wait a few minutes, plug it back in, and just keep trying that. Because the settings work, my cables and everything work, everything was set up correctly, it's just, the AT&T router sucks. Anyway guys, if you like this video, go ahead and drop a like. If you wanna see more of me in your subscription feed, go ahead and hit subscribe. I'll have links to everything I talked about in this video's description, mostly just the PFSense router, and I'll have another link to the PFSense build video down there as well. But anyway guys, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.